I may have accidentally broken my keyboard. Whoops. And my mouse. And while looking for some replacements, I found a card scanner. Totally real story. So after buying a new mouse and keyboard, I created a new Godot project and made the world, player and enemies with the Godot logo. I'm going to make a bullet heaven, like vampire survivors, so all we need is enemies to home in on the player, which is great and all, but now the player needs to move. Using the card scanner. I'll need four different cards for four different directions and another four for diagonals. So the scanner actually takes over two seconds to be able to scan again. Uh, presumably so that, you know, it doesn't scan your card multiple times if you hold it down. But, what's interesting is, if I just pick up the scanner, I can alternate scanning these cards as fast as I want. But regardless, I don't think I will be able to use the card scanning for movement, at least not directly. So I made a simple script, where the player automatically finds the closest enemy position and runs in the opposite direction. The problem? When the enemies are on opposite sides, the AI has no idea what to do, when you, with your big brain, know that you just need to run sideways. So let's teach the AI to be smart like us, which I have no idea how to do. I found a YouTuber called Game Endeavor, and he has an AI that uses weights depending on what's around it to know where to move, which seems like a great idea. Except my smooth brain cannot even begin to comprehend how he does it. Uh, uh, is he just running down? Uh, Basically, it gets all the vectors of the enemies offset by the player position, divides one by the distance squared, and... Never mind. What's important is the player went from this... to this. Now that the player runs away from the enemies more efficiently, we can add attacking, which is very simple. The player finds the closest enemy, calculates the direction, spawns a projectile, and it flies off towards the enemy. And after adding a very basic enemy spawning script, you can sit back and relax as the game plays itself. But in development, you said that this was a card scanning game. Card scanning. Now when you scan this card, instead of running away and shooting, the player runs towards the nearest enemy and slaps them to death. Funnily enough, the way the card scanning works is each card has a different ID, and the scanner literally just types the ID and presses enter. So all I did was rip some code from my previous game, 9x9, and bam. The game still needs a lot of work, starting with player health, but more importantly, graphics. To keep things simple, I've decided on an art style that looks like it's been drawn by a 7 year old. Why? Because I have the drawing skills of a 7 year old. It's a wizard hat, before you ask. I didn't know what to do from the character, tried doing like top down, didn't work, never mind. When this new enemy dies, I made it look like it's getting erased, and when the player dies, they turn into a grave. I've made the map line paper to attempt to complement my art style. And now that we have a map, I've learnt very quickly how the player speedruns entering the void as soon as they can. So to fix that, I'm adding a new weapon called Return. This weapon doesn't target an enemy, but rather makes the player run and attack towards the middle. This is excellent crowd control, as long as the crowd is in your way. I'm also introducing some new enemies. A bomb enemy called Boom Boom. I just did a boom boom. If it gets too close, it blows itself up, including enemies around it. We also got a flying behemoth named Vlad, and some small mouse-like creatures called Mousy. I don't have a good imagination. Currently, the enemies spawn at a constant rate, but that's too easy. Bam! I don't even know what to call this. The enemy's health scales up now linearly, making it even more difficult to survive as time goes on. But more importantly, we're missing a final fourth weapon. So using the dodge and weave AI, but with a slower movement speed, you can now shoot lightning that pierces through enemies. This lightning fires off in random directions, making it a little unreliable, but can decimate a mob of enemies in one hit. Sometimes. I'm limiting the weapons to four to not overwhelm the player in this very accessible game that people will be able to play, and also because I don't have any more cards. I rewrote my attacking, moving, and targeting script to be more efficient, which seems to be working perfectly. One of the most fun things about Bullet Heavens is of course the upgrades. 
So let's add them in. Shouldn't be too difficult, right? This is literally the worst code I have ever made, but it works and that's good enough for me. The way it works is each weapon has five possible upgrades, damage, attack speed, move speed, piercing, and lifesteal. And if a weapon already has piercing, it is replaced with weapon size instead. Every time you level up, you're given two options of upgrades and can pick one. This is separate for each weapon, which all have slightly different base stats and scaling for upgrades. Some might scale harder in damage, others in attack speed. And after adding a quick XP script, menus and other UI, the game is basically playable. But it still feels like we're missing something, and I'm not talking about lacking inputs and controls. We're missing a boss fight. A few questionable designs later, I have this crystal with an eye in the middle. After putting it into the game, I wrote some code that the crystal slowly rotates. <laughs> Currently though, this crystal doesn't do anything, so I gave it a massive laser that decimates the player in one shot. Almost one shot. I don't think this is working. But you can't just move out of the way because there's no movement control, so how are you meant- This laser only shoots in four directions, and therefore if you keep to a diagonal, you are safe. And now, if you survive for two minutes, the crystal will be summoned. I gave it a health bar at the top of the screen since it's so tanky, and once it dies, I ramp up the enemy spawn rate again until the player inevitably loses. <laughs> now for some simple quick changes. I made it so that the weapon that gets upgraded is not the weapon you're holding, but it alternates every level up. Now enemies drop gold, which can be used to purchase permanent upgrades. You're also timed for how long you're alive, so that you know when you beat your personal best. Oh yeah, and I need some sound effects. Normally I would use SFXR, but SFXR is more 8-bit, and I don't think that would really go with the vibe of the game's art. So let's try with my voice. Pew! Pew! No. 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 So I made all the sound effects with SFXR for that true 8-bit feel. So I've done a bit of research and learned that the average person apparently does not own a card scanner. Like, who would have thought? So I've made it playable with the keyboard and mouse. You can click through the menus and you can switch weapons via a button or 1, 2, 3, and 4 on your keyboard. And with that being said, the 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.1 release is on itch.io in the description below.